My name is Kelvin Hughes. Uh, I am the Chief Plant Health and Seeds Inspector for England and Wales. This is part of DEFRA and I work with inside an agency of it called the Animal and Plant Health Agency. So as part of my job, um, what I do with inside the Animal and Plant Health Agency, I oversee the work of the plant health and seeds inspectors. Uh, these are inspectors who work at points of entry looking for plant pests and diseases and try and prevent them to establish into the UK. We also have a workforce that I oversee which looks at um, looking for pests and diseases that are in crops that might have uh, missed our border control or they might have been blown in uh, through environmental means uh, and got into crops or actually come into the UK via propagating material. A third element of work that I help oversee is uh, that of export controls. So um, there's a lot of call upon uh, plants and plant products leaving the United Kingdom for other parts of the world. And uh, teams uh, that we have uh, basically check them for pests and diseases as well to ensure that they do not actually pass on pests and diseases to importing countries. Plant health control is uh, looked after by DEFRA and, and the policies of DEFRA. They set the rules and regulations that we work to. Uh, they follow a format uh, which is based uh, or set up by international protocols and uh, Everything that we do uh, is worked upon by sort of risk assessments. All of our judgments, our inspection protocols are based upon what is the likelihood that, it, that things may sort of establish in this country and what is the risk of wherever pests and diseases, uh, where they may be established around the world and will we encounter them, can we check them at the ports. So the legislation that's set up is um, uh, there are certain commodities which are considered high risk or low risk and the ones which are high risk then we have uh, control measures are put in place. The first measure of that is that when goods of that high risk um, such as material which is what we call plants for planting so these might be cuttings that are produced in countries like uh, Kenya for example they're then sent over to here for propagation for growing up and then sold for retail purposes or in some cases actually planted out for horticultural purposes too um, and though that material uh, is sent over and it had previously been checked by inspectors who are doing similar jobs to us in the exporting country and they issue what is called a phytosanitary certificate or document to say it's pests and diseases that we are concerned about and controlled. When the goods uh, arrive in uh, through a point of entry or what we call a border control post, these may be at airports, they may be at seaports, or they might actually come in through courier hubs as well, uh, based at airports. We then check the paperwork for them to make sure that uh, they are actually the goods that they are actually being you know, uh, been sent over, that the right paperwork fits what was sent. Uh, and then we actually do a visual check to actually check that they conform to any pests and disease you might be able to see. Unfortunately, many pests and diseases are not possible to pick up by a visual inspection. So some of our inspectors with inside the Animal and Plant Health Agency take samples and then send them to on, onto our laboratory. The third line of defence that we have for actually preventing pests and diseases coming to the UK is then we have post-border checks. So we'll do some follow-up inspections or inspectors will at points of, of growing on or actually out in the field or the wider environment. So an example of uh, a uh, pest which we're trying to keep out of the United Kingdom and establishing is, is one which is called tobacco whitefly or Bermisia tobacco is its scientific name. Uh, this is a, a small insect uh, which uh, may come to the UK via different means uh, from countries where it inhabits. Those different means may be that they're coming on uh, plants for planting uh, material. It could come in on plant produce. So things like on, on um, uh, basil leaves, for example, that may have been grown up in, in Africa or Asia and so on. And the reason why we look for these at the points of entry is because if they come in on these crops like basil, for example, and then got transferred into our own glasshouse, it can affect those. And it can affect them in a number of ways. 
Having this insect there can cause some feeding damage. It can cause physiological issues with it. It can uh, prevent uh, the growth of those plants. But most importantly, is that those insects themselves, the Bermisia tobacco or the tobacco whitefly, can carry viruses. And when the plants are growing up, the viruses can then multiply with inside those. It can cosmetically affect them, reducing the yield of, of basil that we're growing here or other leafy veg, but also it can affect the yield of them as well. Being an island nation such as the United Kingdom gives some opportunities that can reduce pests and disease come, coming to the uh, coming to an island. So most notably, it means that by having the water around us, it means that anything that would naturally spread here by sort of just mo movement, animals bringing it on their coats, for example, that doesn't happen. However, um, having the water around us, if there's anything which airborne, it can still come across the channel. And examples of where that's happened are things like Kalara ash dieback, where it's believed spores have come from the continent where it was established and have then sort of been blown over the channel and then affected um, some of our trees, our, our, our ash trees. Um, being an island nation as well, um, it means that uh, uh, now that we've left the European Union, we can set our own rules and regulations of what we consider that we wish to go in and actually check for and try and keep out in terms of pests and diseases of plant health. Whilst we're part of the European Union, uh, then we had to actually be protecting the whole of the European Union from what we're doing. So it meant that we were monitoring for certain pests and diseases like citrus pests and diseases, uh, in addition to crops which were growing here in the UK. Since we've left the European Union, it means that we have now uh, do not need to look for uh, pests and diseases on citrus. It's not a crop that we grow here. So it means that we can now re-resource ourselves to look for other things. So for example, uh, crops that we, we, we grow here, um, which may be other crops which aren't grown in other parts of Europe. So some of the soft fruits, for example. There's been several staging posts uh, that's taken me to, to my career now as the Chief Plant Health and Seeds Inspector for England and Wales. Um, my, first of all, my interest in plant, in plant science started off before doing A-levels, really. I could see that there was uh, uh, changes in the natural world in my garden. Some certain plants were infected by plant pests and diseases and others weren't. And that sparked my interest, really, in why certain plants were more susceptible and, 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 and uh, others uh, were tolerant to pests and diseases. So things like why things got green fly, why things got certain fungal spots, and so on and so forth. I was lucky that during uh, my uh, A-levels, there was a module where we could look at this, you know, sort of plant pests and diseases, and we can perform our own little simple experiments of trying to transfer or, or isolate sort of different f fungi off plants and put them onto petri dishes and then seeing what grew from them. So that through that encounter, I discovered the, um, uh, the world of, you know, looking at things underneath microscopes. And then that took me on to doing uh, a general degree in applied biology. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do other than wanted a career that was going to be in science. As part of that, um, uh, that applied uh, uh, degree that I did, there were various modules on plant pests and diseases. Uh, this took me back to my interest of uh, pre sort of A levels. And um, uh, I then sort of started specializing in, in plant pathology or the study of plant disease. That then took me on to doing a, uh, um, a master's degree in, in crop science and uh, crop protection. Uh, and then following that, I then got a uh, a job working in a laboratory. Uh, the laboratory was designing assays for the detection of, uh, of pests and diseases. And through that, um, uh, my employees, who were the government, um, uh, DEFRA, uh, sponsored me to do a PhD. So as well as doing day-to-day -day work in a, in a diagnostic laboratory, then uh, I helped design uh, assays for the rapid detection of quarantine pests and diseases. Uh, most specifically on uh, the detection of fungal uh, pests and diseases. So I worked on uh, ones which were um, uh, uh, strawberry diseases, um, but also some apple diseases of a quarantine nature. Um, after the time um, of working in the lab and designing assays and getting a PhD through there, 
then I wanted to actually help influence where our samples were coming from. So our samples that were coming to the lab were being taken at the border um, by our inspectors. And so I moved then across from the laboratory into working for the Plant Health and Seeds Inspectorate. With inside that role, I could then play a part at actually helping influence some of the samples that were being taken, where they were coming from, or how we were taking them to help get better samples into the laboratory. When I first joined the Plant Health and Seeds Inspectorate, I went in there as a, uh, as a principal science scientist who was uh, overseeing the work of uh, export controls, issuing phytosanitary certificate, but also some work and activities to do with domestic certification of crops uh, as well, called the Plant Passporting Scheme. Um, from that then, then uh, our career progression then took me to uh, becoming the Chief Plant Health and Seeds Inspector, which not only oversees that work of the export controls and plant passporting, but also surveillance and action, that is the destruction of uh, crops uh, and, and also uh, infected plants in the wider environment when found, uh, but also overseeing the work of import controls as well. So. The best part of my job at the moment uh, is being able to apply the work that I've done through the various different uh, roles that I've done through my time as a diagnostician um, and, uh, and now working in the inspectorate is applying science that we've learned. So it's taking technologies that can be applied with inside the lab, but actually taking them into the field. And this allows us to do very rapid um, uh, diagnosis of uh, pests and diseases at the point of sampling. The reason why that is so good, it means that we can give virtually immediate kind of answers to uh, our client base who we're working with about why we're taking samples, uh, what we're looking for, and allowing them to give give answers to them about is it infected with a certain pest and disease that we're trying to keep outside the country. So that's one aspect of what's really good uh, is, is, is with my job, which is applying science in the field and making important decisions very quickly. Another one is, is actually being able to see uh, new graduates or others coming into, into uh, our workforce and actually seeing them develop their own careers in the same way that I did. So that's probably one of the most enjoyable thing is actually seeing how new people who didn't know where they were going to start off with their career, seeing them progress with inside our plant health area and seeing how uh, science is being applied by them.